everybody hope you guys are having a uh, wonderful pre-christmas uh, season uh, definitely things are definitely feeling a lot more festive and people have set up all their houses around our area and uh, we have pulled out some Christmas decorations also just for the last few days um, before we were heading out to the US which is in 24 hours time we're off to the US uh, for our white Christmas so today is tidy up day pack up day make sure everything uh, we have um, planned is taken from our list. Good morning, Joe, Melissa, uh, Maria, Kayleen, great to see you guys. So this morning, I thought in both of my lives, this one, as well as in my secret authors group, I'm gonna talk about the 10 things small business owners should do over the Christmas period. Well, it depends, um, right? Uh, some of these things will be relevant to uh, whatever stage of your business you're at. And some things you might uh, need to do if you're in the early stages of your business and other things not so much. So good morning, Louise and Maurice. So great to see you guys. This is my last Monday morning live for the year. I'll be back probably early January, so in a, uh, in a year's time, in a month's time. And, um, and then after this live, I'm going to go in my author's group and I'm going to tell those guys the 10 things they should be doing over Christmas. And I have made sure I kept them separate because I know a lot of my uh, authors follow this. So authors, you're going to get 20 things um, uh, because I'm going to deliver 10 alternate things in um, the authors group at 9.30. Hey, Beck, great to see you. I mean, we're having a, a scorcher of a day here in Melbourne, 37 degrees. So we're leaving at 37 degrees to go to minus 17 over in Utah. Apparently there's going to be a blizzard and we had to change over our hire car uh, uh, because we had hired a van and apparently we need a four-wheel drive, but we wanted all that extra space. Anyway, we've managed to rehire a more suitable uh, car for all the snow blizzards and making sure that it's going to fit us all and we're going to be able to get through uh, to where we need to go. Good morning. All right, so let's get to it. I do type up some things here about those uh, 10 things small business owners should do over the Christmas period. And I don't know about you guys, but in the first five years of my business, I kept quite busy over the uh, Christmas period. I was uh, uh, still uh, having a lot of family time, but there wasn't really a switch off button. I kind of uh, was, was ready to launch new products. I was planning for the following year. And I think this is a perfect time to really uh, catch up and tidy everything up so it feels nice and fresh for the new year. And I'll give you some of those things that I was doing over the um, previous, um, you know, early on in the business and what I nowadays do over this Christmas period. So I consider when I finished my last event, um, which happened a few, um, a couple of weeks ago. Well, actually, our half day events finished literally a month ago. So I actually started all this stuff a month ago, and um, and now I'm ready to go because I knew I had uh, this time to go to the US. But nevertheless, I would have started early December on this kind of stuff. So I'm kind of like a month ahead of you guys um, if you're going to do some of these things. All right, so let's get through the list. The number one thing is to think about and rewrite or update your business systems, right? I'm sure you do things a certain way, but after a little while you figure out that, hey, I need to say a little bit more here. I need to uh, add this extra step here. The, you know, you evolve and you refine and you uh, develop um, better ways of doing stuff. I know with my publishing company, which we started about 15, 16 months ago, in the last 16 months, we've rewritten our publishing email templates and systems probably about four times. And we just did it and updated them uh, recently. So obviously when you're starting out and you're early on in business, you're going to uh, refine and fine tune things a lot more frequently. And as you are in it longer, you're tweaking and adjusting and doing, um, uh, doing, you know, doing it less uh, and then outsourcing it for someone else to uh, take care of those tasks. So the beauty about refining and rejigging your um, uh, like your systems for your business at this time of the year is that in January you could hire someone to do all of those tasks 
that you repetitively do and you think you can do the best way and the fastest way, but you'll um, be able to develop and evolve and grow your business so much more if you can just outsource those things. So number one thing is refine and rewrite your templates. I mean, you might not need to start from scratch, but you might find yourself that you're always adding that extra thing to an email that now has become a regular thing. So what are some of those things that you do that you can now put in a systematic way? So number one thing you can do over this Christmas period and you should do as a small business owner, and perhaps not the peak Christmas period, but right now, early December, or right, you know, after Christmas is over, you know, spending a, a few hours few hours overall um, to focus because we are less, I guess, um, required, less emails hit our inbox. There's not as much distractions um, that are in the normal day-to-day -day activities. So I find that this is a great time to do that. So rewrite new business systems. Number two, well, this applies to those of you guys that go out networking or you go um, run your own events. But basically what we do in our business, because we have an events-based business, is we book in and lock in all our venues, all of our flights, and all the other things that we know in advance will be happening in the following year. So if there's some stuff like that that you do, just plaster your time. I know Stuart spends one day and he literally is just on the phone filling out um, contracts and signing agreements for this venue, for that venue in that city. I'm on the on the flights, you know, checking this airline, that airline, figuring out, um, you know, where we're going, what are all of our dates because already on our wall, and I can't turn my whole computer around, we've got the 2020 calendar with everything that's scheduled and literally everything is already booked for us. So what gets scheduled gets done is the attitude we have. We're not kind of booking stuff in like two days because once it, you're in execution mode, which is throughout the year, you don't want to stop and go, oh, shit, I didn't buy my flight to Sydney this week or, um, you know, because you can pre-organize all of that. And, of course, in pre-organize, stuff like this you get the best rates um, and prices and you can bulk negotiate your venues and say I'm gonna be back here three times this year and blah these are the dates and they give you awesome deals in terms of um, re, uh, reusing them and getting some new um, uh, deals and, and and prices across the uh, across the range all right, so that's number two. So also if you're a regular networker at networking events and all that kind of stuff, you know, put everything in your diary. So fill out pretty much, um, by the way, thank you so much. The diaries are 90% sold out. Um, these diaries, um, literally today's the last day mum can post something out because every single person that works in this business is overseas. So there's no one going to be on uh, here. Uh, to be able to post stuff because uh, Viv's already flying to the UK. Like yesterday, she left. We're flying to the US. We're taking Mum along with us. So and literally, my VA is in the Philippines. So yeah. But there's pages here in the plan, um, and that um, that that are your annual calendar. And this kind of stuff needs to be pre-filled out. Actually, I'll show you my little one because I'm using the A5 size one. But, um, yeah, everything is filled out. This is also on a whiteboard kind of thing up on my wall. And literally I'm set, ready to go once the year starts, but I know I don't need to do it yet for two, uh, two months. It can be very overwhelming doing it, but you can put in all your networking things and then schedule everything around your regular things that happen um, in your business and with your activities. So that's number two. If you do uh, do events that you book all your venues, you get your special prices, you book all your uh, flights and just get it done now so you don't, don't have to think about it when you are required to be more with people and more communication and things are super busy. Number three is review your prices and guess what? Increase your prices. So review your prices and really when you review them, what I want you to do, good morning, Moana. What I want you to do is think about how much does it cost you, hey, Carol, uh, how much does it cost you to find a client, yeah? Um, sometimes you might not even know what that looks like, feels like. Um, uh, you kind of think, well, it didn't cost me anything, but it always costs you something. Whether it's in time or money, it costs you money uh, and time to find and uh, a client. And we know what that figure is within our business. And accordingly, when we're figuring out what our prices are, we're looking at our costs and, and things like, you know, hard costs, soft costs, all that sort of stuff, advertising costs. And we figure out, are we priced where we need to be? 
and can we has our business or system developed enough so we can um, justify a price increase and be able to obviously believe that that with, with, within that price that we can sell our program. And when you're early on in business, you should more frequently be increasing your prices as you develop and get better at it. Um, you might reach a point where you um, you kind of stabilize and you kind of increment very uh, at small amounts, but in the earlier days, you might uh, you might see that you actually increase your prices in significant chunks as you uh, set up more infrastructure around what you do. So, inc review your prices and definitely increase your prices, even if it's by a small, small percentage uh, to move forward. We recently rejigged well what we offered. We kept the price the same, or you could do that um, as an alternative. So, we kept our price the same. Time, but we took away a little bit of what we were offering. So instead of uh, providing 500 printed books in our publishing, uh, in our retreat program, we reduced that to 300. So instead of increasing the price further, we just took away some printed books from the package and that's how we did it. So that could be also an alternative or an option of how you can do it um, because we feel like we're in a sweet spot and um, and um, everything is fair where, where, we, where we see it. All right, so the next thing is number four thing is rewrite your new no dickheads policy okay so you guys know some of you who watch me and some of you who don't is that Stuart and I every January rewrite our no dickheads policy so um, this is your ideal dream client that you want to attract and the things that you will not put up with okay so you know who do you you know who, who are they what do they look like um, you know uh, Actually, this is more about behavior and um, how you want uh, and who they are as a person. It's not so much what they earn, where do they live, are there, um, uh, you know, a certain uh, 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 practitioner, psychologist, whatever it is. It's more about uh, the no dickheads policy is about behavior and personality. Okay, so who are the people, you know, what are they like towards you? How do they make their decisions? So, yeah, it's more like how their mind works over, um, you know, what are their demographics, if you like. Uh, so glad you passed that policy. Yes, Becky, uh, Becky definitely um, passed that policy. And often when we uh, qualify people prior to uh, having a qualifying chat in our business, we say, you got, uh, we're looking for these traits, right? And then also the very last clause at the bottom is, and you have to pass our no ticket policy. And I seriously think it works like magic because every year uh, we sit down and we go, did we attract these people? What kind of slipped through the cracks? And then uh, we refine the new um, no tickets policy and we go, we want more of the same that we have last year, but also we want da 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 da, -da and we write it. It's pretty much a one page document uh, that we enjoy doing together because um, Stuart thinks of different things, I think of different things, and now we get our team involved as well and we, we read it or, you know, we might write it first together and then we'll ask them, have we missed something? And um, this is how, you know, we put the energy out there, you know, you've got to ask for what you want. Um, and we always phrase it in the positive um, sense, in the present tense, and as if we're in possession of exactly uh, those kinds of people. She likes being on Santa's naughty list, uh, Louise. All right, so number four was rewrite your new uh, your new no dickheads policy. So number five is re uh, reflect on your results in 2019 and set new income stream goals for 2020. So what does that mean? So sit down and have a look at it. A lot of people actually don't know their numbers. It's very, very, very um, odd when uh you know but very prevalent across small business owners to not know their accounting uh whether they're in front where they're in the red uh what did they earn for this from this income stream in their business let's say books let's say coaching let's say mastermind programs uh online programs and all that kind of stuff they really don't know um, you know what is going on and I think sometimes um, they play the ignorance is bliss kind of um, card you know oh, I think I'm successful and everything's going uh, uh, well and good until you know shit hits the fan and they really have to look at um, the truth so just 
just do it straight away because once you know what the truth is and what the reality is of what your results were and what they produced, you can then accordingly set some um, realistic yet stretchy goals for 2020 and divide everything that you do and see how it can happen because everything is about reverse engineering. Reverse engineering, what is the big goal in mind to what does that look like? How many people do I need to speak to? How many people do I need to get rejected by in order to be accepted by a, 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 an X percentage of other people which will produce the X amount of result for my business? That's all it is. It's just maths at the end of the day. And if you're looking at those results year after year after year after year, you will be able to see the pattern and your business will become predictable. I mean, yes, things can happen in the economy and how people make decisions and all that kind of stuff. But really, if you know numbers and you know how your business operates and what your conversion, rate are, conversion rates are, you can actually relax and you don't have to worry about Say this Christmas period can be stressful for a lot of people who are starting in the beginning years of their business because income can dwindle down to absolutely nothing. Perhaps if you're in a one-on-one -on -one kind of business, you want to take the time off with your family, but you cannot um, afford to take the time off um, or people don't want to be coached or, or have the one-on-one -on -one kind of stuff over this period. So therefore, you have no income. So this is why it's really crucial at this period of, um, of the year to be thinking about creating those passive income streams, whether it is building that online course, whether it, whether it is releasing a new product or writing that next book or whatever it is that ultimately is going to get you to a point where uh, you are taken care of over this period. Like literally over this period, we don't do any sales. I mean, yeah, last week an email went out, we saw a ton of these planners. So we think about actually different things we could promote or sell over this period when we are in December, January, and all of our hard work paid off throughout the year because we had $50,000 in sales last week and I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do any events. But why? Because all of the foundations and the hard work that we put in throughout the year came through through people upgrading from our online portal to our big program. Um, what else did we sell? Oh, we sold a couple of publishing packages, a ton of these planners. I was like, oh, my God. Like, you know, you kind of go... I haven't really been anywhere for the last five weeks. I've been just in Melbourne, no events and all that kind of stuff. But that kind of stuff, the, 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 it does carry through. If you do the hard work in periods, it'll, you know, your, your good work will pay off um, over the Christmas and January period. And I totally wasn't expecting it. I was just expecting a, a, a complete lull period, which is, um, which is what usually would happen. And I'm okay with that now. But it is, can be very scary when you're just starting out in business and you only have you and you selling your time for money. So think about, this is the time to think about how to start building into your, those passive income streams. Okay, let's go to the next one. It, oh, well, the next one ties in with the previous one is that is that create a new product i know the first five years in this business i created a new manual a new program that i would release and launch into the new year and that started building my intellectual property which eventuated into licensing the weight loss niche back in the day and all of these little things that are that are pushed out you know what what is another thing because all of the products you know uh you know, physical products like planners or books and all that sort of stuff, they're not going to by themselves make you rich, yeah? Um, if you, okay, if you can uh, go down the path where you purely say, I, all I'm going to sell is products and you really develop that expertise. Actually, I've got one of my clients who helps product-based businesses grow and all that kind of stuff. But if you're in the space where you want to inspire and transform people, which is, you know, you guys who are the psychologists, the coaches, the practitioners, you you want to make an impact at a more transformational level, which is where your programs and your masterminds and your retreats and all that kind of stuff is actually going to be the thing that is going to uh, really provide that for your clients and all of the other stuff are the extras. But these extras, these little products that you kind of go, oh yeah, 20, 30, 50 dollars or whatever it is, they actually end up paying, can I just say, they pay for all of our interstate travel, all of our flights, accommodation, venue hires, for everything that we do when we go and do our half-day events because a lot of you will know that our half-day workshops, we lose money at the front end. Absolutely. We you know invest so much in the Facebook ads, into the travel, accommodation, all of that sort of stuff. However, it is the products that sell at these events that actually 
pay for a lot of the the negative um you know uh, i guess the, the where we lose you know so we don't lose as much um and therefore of course it's more profitable at the end of the day so products are a really great top up it's like when you walk into the petrol station and they say you do you want, do you want chewies to add on to that or or um chocolate or whatever it is the products are you know that kind of question for us and uh, they're always there supporting the business in a different um in a different way and building rapport and relationship with people who are perhaps not ready to jump in um uh, for the full thing with you all right so that's number i think that was number six okay number seven Actually, that was number five. Number seven, review your accounting and clear bad debt or write it off, okay? Um, allows the new to come in, so declutter your finances. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but every business has um, bad debt where people have not been paying you, they've stopped paying you as much as chase up and follow. And please, if you are not following up digi uh, diligently and on time and following all the follow-up processes. By the way, Small Business Victoria has awesome templates and stuff on how to recover bad debt and all that kind of stuff. But at one point in time, even though if you've provided the service and you haven't been paid and we've all made poor decisions over, uh, over, over time, I just have chosen to cut my losses and uh, as long as I followed up diligently for six to 12 months and if I feel like I'm not getting through, you know what, I write it off, I clear it out of my accounting system and I go, just let it go. And um, even though, I, you know, you can feel, oh, I've been ripped off, da 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 um, I, I write it off and I go, the, the minute I do that, I'm making more space for new stuff to come in. Now, it's a small percentage of the business, but it's very clear, to, uh, very important to be on top of this because otherwise you will feel like you actually are doing better than you actually really are. So certainly when setting up your new systems, you need to have non-negotiables in terms of how you will allow people to treat you in the financial terms of how you set up your business and your accounting and your delivery of your products and services. Um, you know, we've all made mistakes of providing something to someone before they've paid us or, um, or delivering something yeah, before someone has paid in full and we've been bitten on the butt, yeah? And it's not a nice feeling. You can feel like, you know, you know uh, it, it, and sometimes people can um, uh, perceive a service-based business differently, like as if the time is, um, you know, uh, is not valued or the value within providing the service is not as as valued versus, say, buying a physical product like a TV or whatever it is. And, and they think that you can just write it off because, you know, oh, you know, you know they're having a hard time. And, um, you know, everyone has a hard time, but we have to manage it accordingly. And as I said, go through that stuff, clear it out, clear any bad debt, um, action it if you haven't been actioning it so far. But certainly then just um, cut your losses and write some stuff off uh, if you just feel like you're never going get, to um, get through um, and um, you don't want to fight it, basically. Hey, Teresa, great to see you on the call. Um, okay, so that was number seven. Uh, number eight is read the book Indistractable. I guess I read this awesome uh, bright yellow book, uh, Indistractable, and it had amazing strategies on how to stay focused uh, and not be distracted by external, in, internal triggers and all that kind of stuff. It's a perfect time to do that. Set up your devices, set up your desktop, like just do some of the things that really stick out for you for from this book um, and um, and make 2020 a year that you're going to be able to focus um, you know on your business at times that you need to focus on um, and um, and also in um, uh, in your family and uh, and personal life I'll show you one awesome tip that um, they um, shared in the book hang on I'm just gonna get the thing um, so in in the book, he talked about um, how his wife um, got this, um, you know, a focus crown, if you like. So this this is it, right? And um, basically, whenever because they work from home, just like we do, uh, whenever um, uh, they, or her, or him, uh, well, mostly her, she she has this strategy is whenever she wears that crown, uh, like so, um, that um, no one in the family, kids and uh, others uh, who are around are allowed to actually distract her, 
right? So she's doing focus work, she's concentrating on it. So that's the little signal. Um, how in the book he says um, he's got a thing that he puts on his computer that says, I'm working right now, I'll come back later, or whatever it is. But um, I bought about eight, ten of these, seven, no, seven, seven of these crowns, and I taught my kids and my husband and also Viv, my PA and everyone what they meant and that everyone can have one um, when we need to be focusing so we don't get distracted because often Stuart will work near the kitchen area and Viv and I will come out and we're chit-chatting, we're going to have a coffee or whatever it is um, and he does get distracted so and we sometimes can just start talking to him when he's trying to concentrate. So now even my husband <laughs> is going to wear one of his focus crowns and, um, and really focus. So read the book Indistractable, get the strategies out that you love and um, and set them in place in 2020 because with the amount of information that is hitting us from left, right and centre, from notifications, from pings and dings everywhere, um, it's really important that uh, if you want to progress and succeed in business that you do stay indistractable. All right, so that's the book. That's my uh, reading list for you guys for this Christmas. All right. Um, uh, order number nine, order any new marketing collateral you would need for 2020. So this is the time to have a look at your banners, to have a look at your stuff that, um, that pre represents your business. And do you need to redesign it or tweak it and order some new fresh um, collateral? Because we travel a lot. Um, our banners like it rolled up, unrolled up, unrolled up, you know, so many times. And in luggage and all that kind of stuff, they do get destroyed and damaged over a period of time. You may have rebranded. Um, so freshen up your look um, and start the new year with some new marketing collateral. Great time to organize it, to work with a designer. You have time, you're not being rushed. In January, you can place your orders and get some new fresh stuff uh, that you can use um, as you promote your business in 2020. So really good time to do that. And the number 10 thing is have a break. Yes, yeah, stay off social media. Check your email once a day. Certainly, you don't need to fully switch off, especially if you're in early on in the business. But as the years go on, consider maybe during this period you might have a blackout period, say from from the 20th of um, December to the 6th of January. Actually, we are considering doing that next year, not this year. Uh, and if you communicate this stuff uh, early enough with your clients, it will be fine, yeah? So as you progress more in business, you'll be able to set some more boundaries around what you do. Uh, but certainly, even if you're not switching off, you can, you know, set aside an hour to deal with any incoming communication. And, um, you know, when I was building new products, even though, guys, I've given you a lot of homework and a lot of stuff that you could be doing over this Christmas period, this kind of stuff, you might only need to focus on one hour a day. And that was my goal early in my business. I would still have my normal Christmas period with my family. But to say, have I done my business hour today? And once I've done it, I usually like to smash it out in the morning. So then I feel like I'm truly in the Christmas break for the rest of the day. Because when you're not going to events and you're not um, seeing clients or whatever it is, you do have an abundance of time in the day. So doing an hour on some of these 10 activities that I listed throughout this live today is not going to, you know, make you get out of, um, you know, your Christmas celebrations and connection with your family. So it is really, really important that you do have that break, that you don't run yourself down because if you are in the types of businesses that most of the people that I know and follow me are, well, you do need to recharge your batteries because you give off a lot of energy to your clients and um, and um, you want to reconnect with your family, especially if you, you are out of the house a lot or you travel and things like that, make sure you do that for yourself. So that's my parting, parting kind of wisdom uh, with you guys. So um, I'll just recap the 10 things we talked about in case you've joined the call. Um, and just as a summary, uh, and that were 10 things small business owners should do over the Christmas egg they here on my phone. Uh, rewrite your new business system, so retweak them. Book and lock in venues, flights and other things you know in advance will happen so that it's all done in one big cluster. Number three was review your prices and increase them or tweak them or how, how do you, you know, uh, where you're at. Number four was rewrite your new, new, <laughs> new no dickheads policy. Um, and if you've never written one, write your first one and then review it again in a year's time. Number five was reflect on 2019 results um, and set the new income stream goals for 2020. 
Number six was create a new product that you're going to launch in 2020, um, you know, as part of your, you know, your infrastructure of the business. Review your accounting and clear bad debt or write it off. Allow the new to come in. So declutter that kind of stuff was number seven. Number eight was read indistractable. Put things in place for 2020 from it so you remain focused. Number nine was order any new marketing collateral you need for 2020. And number 10 is have a break, switch off social and check emails once a day. You are very welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you, Melissa, for being on the call. Uh, guys, I've had a wonderful year sharing with you these Monday morning lives. They will continue. Uh, it's my thing that starts my week. My week ends today because tomorrow we're flying out to the U.S., to, uh, well, we're starting off with LA, going to San Diego, then driving to Vegas, which is the halfway point to our snow uh, place, and then Utah near Park City is where we're going to spend the two weeks uh, and we get back home on New Year's Eve. So um, I can't wait. And, uh, yeah, check out the uh, photos we'll be probably posting. Uh, there'll be a lot of snow spam photos uh, coming through. Have a wonderful time with your families. And thank you, everyone, who has ordered the 2020 planner. And our last call out is that if you want one of these, I've got six black left and 20 pink left. They've gone like hotcakes. So next year we won't be taking many of these around our events because they've been done and dusted and mum can post it out today. So I'll just post the link for it in the comments uh, in case you do want one today we can send it out but from tomorrow you just gonna have to wait in until we come back to New Year's Eve to post another one out so have a wonderful time and I'll talk to you guys in 2020 happy new year